Good morning. Welcome to the Battles Within. We're continuing our study today in the uh, book of John, chapter 3. We're going to be finishing the third chapter of John today. So we're going to be reading verses 30, uh, 31 through 36. So let's read. It said, remember, this is still John the Baptist. They're, they're dealing with John the Baptist. And so John the Baptist is talking with his disciples. And then we know he just said in verse 30 that he must increase, but I must decrease. And so then he follows on. He says, he that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he hath seen and heard that he testifieth, and no man receive his testimony. He that hath received his testimony hath set to his zeal that God is true. For he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hand. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. John gives them a final ump. One of the greatest testimony or things about Jesus was mentioned here in the last verse of this chapter. Greater, I think, than, John, than for God so loved the world he gave his only begotten Son. Because he goes to the point, he nails it on the head, but he sees it start off before he does that. He tells him that he comes from above. That means Jesus is from God. Jesus is God. He said, come from above. He that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of earth. That's talking about himself. But he that cometh from the heaven is above all. I can only tell you the things that I know on this earth, but Jesus comes, he comes from heaven. He says, and he that has seen and heard, and he testifieth, and no man receive his testimony. Jesus, can, Jesus is telling you about what's going on in heaven. He can tell you those things. He can tell you about the path, the plan of God. He's seen it. Yet these people aren't accepting his words, he said. Verse 33, he that received the testimony has set to zeal his zeal that God is true. Those of us that believe it, those who accept what Jesus is saying, believe in God, that God is real, that God is true. What he says is true. Verse 34, for whom God hath sent, speaketh the words of God. For whom God hath sent, talking about Jesus, he speaks the word of God. For God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. He wasn't limited with his knowledge. Jesus had all the Holy Spirit, not parts of it. John had moments where the Holy Spirit filled his life, but remember the Holy Spirit had not come upon us yet. God and Jesus said, I must send the Comforter to you, and when if I go, I've got to leave. I got to send the Comforter to you. Well, when the Comforter came out, the Holy Spirit came back. He came to dwell within the hearts of the believers. And so John is saying here, the person that for whom God hath sent, he said, uh, uh, for whom the God hath sent, speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. So Jesus didn't have a limitation of the Spirit. He had the Spirit all the time. Verse thirty-five: The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into His hand. God the Father loves the Son, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. But he gives all things into his hands. Jesus has total power, total authority, he says. But then he says, verse 36, and this is a powerful, powerful verse. Listen to what it said. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. If you only get saved, you don't have everlasting life, you believe in the Son of God. You believe in Jesus Christ, he said. And he that believeth not the Son of God shall not see life. It's pretty much A or B. But the wrath of God abideth on him. So you have a choice here, John says. You have a choice. He's telling his disciples, he's whining and complaining about that this crowd is bigger than that crowd. And he said, listen, you have a choice. You who believe in the Son of God, you'll have eternal life. And those who don't believe in the Son of, that he's the Son of God will not have eternal life. And the wrath of God I don't want the wrath of God on me. I'm calling out to you today that if you're not saved today, God is calling you. He says, if you trust in the Son of God, if you believe in the Son of God, you have eternal life. But if you don't, if you're out there today and you don't trust in the Son of God, you don't believe in the Son of God, you're not accepting Jesus, you don't turn your life over to Him, then He says, the wrath of God abideth on Him. I don't want the wrath abiding on me. I don't want the wrath abiding on you. So let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much for this opportunity to study your word. I pray for those that might be listening today that don't know you as their personal Savior. Lord, I thank you for those of us who do. Those of us who have eternal life because we know he's the Son of God. But Lord, there's plenty who don't know. We pray for them right now that they would come to know you for it's eternal life because we know the eternally too late is that the wrath of God will abide on them. 
I pray, Lord, for their souls right now. For in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Thank you for your time and your attention today.